So today is the first day back to my home setup. I got back in from Taiwan to Vancouver late last night. I'm still adjusting to some jet lag here, but um, overall, I'm very happy to be uh, using on my home setup, on my mechanical keyboard, and having four full-sized monitors again. Like there's just nothing better than that. The laptop lifestyle only works for like so long, right? So very decent way to start my first day back. I didn't trade on Monday, but today I traded. I N well E Y E N and a couple of the stocks, but this is my biggest winner on the day. So I started um, small pre market to be honest. After this eight dollars, like if you look at these wicks on the around the eight dollars mark, that tells me there's a lot of selling on the eight, around the eight dollars. And I actually started early, you know, it flushed to seven fifties. So I didn't cover because you know starter size pre market, but once it reclaims eight dollars, that's when I started to cover. So I actually took a small loss pre-market but once that immediately rejects i put it back you know pre-market size short we did try to push again but you know there was just so much selling and uh, the breakout was very very met with a lot of resistance let's just say that and at the market open you know or well, nearly open i covered into the flush and i was all out and at that point i was looking for a push right at the open to reshort short into and risking seven dollars right seven dollars is a line in the sand for us if we can reclaim and hold seven, we might, you know, get a grind back to eight and maybe we'll see some more resistance again. But you can see right at the open, we're just so weak. We can barely even test seven dollars. Like we had this tiny, tiny push here, but you know, we just reject right away and just slam right back down. So that's where we can see that the selling was really heavy and you don't want to unload the dips on these kind of heavy selling stocks. So that's why I scaled in short, got a very nice size, covered some small but added into 620s that gave me a very nice average on the rest of the full size around six all the way down here 640s because I added but again, it gave us a very nice downside covered some small around 550s but was out most of it around 490s and then later on near the end of the day 498 so very nice trade and it's pretty decent size even though I had thought that we're gonna get even more push for me to add into we didn't but I'm very happy that I rolled it out all the way to near the very end of the day here a second trade prph this one is really small winner i actually took a first loss on the long side here as you can see long the here rejected didn't work covered well not covered sold i tried it again didn't work this is why i realized you know we're extremely heavy and then i realized that there was a pumping in this so i was like okay you know what this is gonna tank because like we talked about before if there is some artificial buying where everyone's buying and looking for the same price target and we don't get it it's gonna sell off right I cut my long and I flip short and added once we break down this you can see these tiny tiny support on 380s once that breaks it's a nice flush down to uh, 320s and unlike EYEN I did not have the patience to hold this one so this one turned out to be a very small winner some of the stock has basically those there's some other smaller winners but let's just talk about RCL cruise line so this is one of the travel stocks that's gapping up with the entire market. Same thing with AAL, other couple other stocks like CCL. But you know, that's the thing with these market gap ups. We closed around 57 and when you gap all the way up to, you know, 62 pre-market and at the open, we kind of just sold off. A lot of times they test the downside first and you can see downside 5860s. That's why I started getting this area, right? This rough area is where I'm starting to get interested in the long why well you know 5860s it's around some some daily support is it guaranteed to hold no it's not but it could right you know like if you look at the technical levels on the daily chart there is a chance of holding and that's where i started looking for basing to go long and once we start getting this breakout that's where it's confirmed and i'm selling into the breakout so some very nice sales around 59 70s 59 80s we did end up going higher later on around 60 
T61s, but I like to trade these kind of moves in the first few hours of the day. I'm not really looking forward to hold these kind of stocks all day. So overall, I'm a pretty decent way to start. Coming back to Vancouver, and I'm still adjusting to the jet lag, but I'm looking forward to tomorrow and see what the market brings. Okay, so I forgot to record the trades from Wednesday, August 12th. So let's go over them really quick. First trade is OSTK on the short side yesterday. The stock they actually announced about the night before. So we had some gap down. And OSTK is one of those stocks that you know actually rang up huge recently. So this is the trading day from yesterday, right? You can see we actually gapped down and we got a pop at the market open from about 87 all the way to 91 dollars and this one you know in, I did well, but in hindsight, I think I stayed a little bit too patient. You know, I shorted into the pops as per planned, and we also shorted some overnight in my other swing account. That got me a very nice average, about $90. And then I re added more after we break down this $88 support, where, you know, I added even bigger here too. So I had a really nice size, a very nice average. And I was, you know, to be honest, looking for the flush of $85. If we can break down this low of the day, you can see on the daily, if we do break down, we have a lot of room down to $80 and even lower. And the offering price was $84. So there's definitely a potential of a downside, but I just stayed very very patient and a little bit too patient and actually gave back you know a lot of unrealized profits near the end of the day and second trade yesterday was mrna you can see we gapped up huge after hours and if you look at the daily charts you know like this is one of the stocks that you know, sells off the huge pre-market gaps. It did on this day, this day, this day, and some of the days over there. So, you know, if you, you've traded the stocks many times before, like I have, you would have seen the, the behavior and they tend to repeat itself. And that's why, you know, I was more short biased on the stock. You know, I started shorting pre-market over here and added some more around 76s. So that gave me a nice average of low 76s. I recovered into the flush i was trying to add some more but once we got this pop a few minutes actually half an hour before the market opened i covered and that gave me the nice bullet to add at the open when we popped up to 75 dollars so very nice ad i actually you know got in full size after the open over here around 73.5 and then added on the way down as well so you know i'm very happy about this trade it's one of those stocks that you have seen me trade time and again and because usually the same kind of price action tend to repeat itself on the same stock so i'm very happy about my two big winners yesterday even though you know on the ostk trade you know i do regret giving back some you know profits unrealized profits here you can see i gave some back some more at the end of the day but sometimes in trading you know when you have these big picture moves and potential big winners i try to let it work right it's a fine balance between you know letting a trade work and capture the big move versus taking the meat of the move and do not outstay you know sometimes there's a fine balance in that and you know it, it's hard to say exactly what I should have done other than you know re reflecting on this in hindsight after the fact so a lot of lesson to be learned whether it's a big winner small winner or a small loser so today on Wednesday August 13th actually a small red day for me I'm red but I'm I'm actually quite happy about the way I traded because I think I managed my risk really well and you know I know it's weird to hear people being happy about being red but obviously I, I'm not happy about being red you know no one likes to lose right but i'm happy about the way i manage my trades and all this uh, all those losers are you know i stopped out according to my plan and they are all within my risk profile so i'm happy about this the first stock is fat this is a small winner so it's not a loser but you can see we gapped up you know from this sketchy daily chart i think we were about what 
150, 200% gap on the day. That's why I started short pre-market here, here, here. That gave me an average about 10 30s and actually covered for a small loss early on, right? You know, 11 20. So that's a loss about what a dollar a share, but it's a small loser. It's also pre-market size and it's also within my risk profile. And after I actually tried the long, didn't work, small size, I got out and then actually flipped short. Covered some before the market opens and right at the open, we actually tried to hold up. I was not involved, but I did start adding short after we failed to hold this $9 level. Started shorting, risky $9. And over here, I added, added, added. You know, in hindsight, this ad was a chase, but you know, I was up pretty nicely and I was trying to add into my winner. And you can see later on, this is a low float stock after all and crowded, let's just say, you know, newsletter alert, trying to buy this from about, you know, $8 all the way to nice. They actually added on the $9 breakout so you know I did get squeezed here you can see right here I cover half of a short for a loss and I did make some small profits here and here but overall this is a turned out to be a small winner just because I didn't size into this and the trades you know I had I think I had more trades here yeah you can see here that made some small profits but you know it, it's basically a scratch trade for me but again still within my risk profile was IGC so I was short bias on this one because you know this stock literally rang up from like 60 cents by pre-market that's why you know on this kind of sh you know gap up i was you know more short biased i do understand that i essentially have to risk 390s right you know 390s is the after hours high and also you know pre-market high that we couldn't break above but i started in small pre-market same same idea as fat actually i actually took a loss early on covered my pre-market short trade and uh, you know i wanted to reassess and see what happens whether it's a long or short i ended up shorting this you know after you know we flush heavy down to 280s this is when i was thinking okay you know what pre-market highs we're not breaking higher and we actually flush down so heavy so that's why i started shorting on the pops to three and then 330s and you know you know this turned out to be you know a squeeze you can see volume came in and actually got squeezed i got covered here for a loss you know loss on the short side and this is why we entered some i just tried to scalp it long but the long trade wasn't great risk reward wise i think i only got about 20 cents on the long trade and after this i started shorting again so the second short well actually the third short now did make me back some money but you know i wasn't patient enough to hold for the big flush all the way down to I guess 230 by the end of the day just because I don't like to be involved in this kind of chop action you know I prefer when trading these small caps a more fluid follow-through like a lot more directional based and this kind of chop action I did not like so you know I did you know take a pretty decent loss early on and made some back on the secondary short later on as well so but this is the trade that put me red on the day it's a manageable loss so I'm I'm happy about that. I managed my risk. I covered when I should have right here instead of holding all the way up to you know 450. So that would have been a lot worse. Yesterday, as you remember, I just talked about I was short OSDK and I was thinking we're gonna flush down to 80s. And today, uh, you know, I came back looking for something similar to see if we're gonna get that today. And we didn't. You can see I started shorting some pop to 92s. You know, trying to see if we're gonna, this is just a low volume flood pop and we're gonna flush down to 88. We didn't get that. So I covered up, ended up being a small scalp, small win. I tried it again here, didn't work. That's why I covered up. So the give back some profit but on a stock like OSTK you really want to scale into it because the spread is really you know hard to trade and also you know it's a large cap stock that requires more capital to size in so if your full size is 2,000 shares you want to go in like 500 500 500 rather than going 2,000 shares all at once so that was the idea and I tried that here try to scale in small on these lower highs but in the afternoon it's not my ideal time in trading so i only took some you know pretty small wins so you know i and i missed this flush here so that was a little bit frustrating you know i don't want to be too 
bearish on a stock, but this is one of those stocks where the technicals and the fundamentals just tell me there's a lot more room to the downside. But we'll see what happens, right? You know, I don't want to be fundamentally right, but technically wrong. So very nice way to end the week. Um, as you remember, yesterday I had a small red day, but you know, no worries. Today I traded well, and uh, I'm really happy about my recovery and more. And calling a day now, Fridays are usually the days where I start giving back profit like I did earlier, FTCH. So this stock, you know, the nice daily breakout was extremely strong. You can see, you know, we gapped up overnight due to earnings release and we had a very nice push. And I did catch a meet here uh, around 29.70s. Ideally, you know, I wanted to add to full size, but there was never a pullback to get back in. So I sold into the push most of it. I did re-add over here and here, but I did get chopped up a little bit here. As you can see, I got stopped out. In hindsight, my stop was set too tight. I got stopped out and I sold some more here and I, you know, did go back in for scalps on the long side again here, but, you know, missed the major push to 3180s. I should have sold some here, but I was thinking we're going to test $32 next. But when we didn't get that and we cracked VWAP and we just kind of, the, the price action after we cracked, it, there was no significant bounce after that. And a lot of times that could be a bearish outlook for the stock, unfortunately. Even though I did go back in long, I'm very careful and still protecting my downside. Just because, you know, the stock has good news and, you know, I was really bullish on the stock, still gotta manage the risk and, you know, respect the price action. So, you know, I did give back some here, over here, and here as well. You can see I did try to go back and re-long this, thinking that we can get a push to back to at least $30. We didn't get that, and the stock is just kind of chopping around near the low of the day now so you know that's unfortunate i did give back some profit but overall it's it's fine i managed my risk pretty well and i'm happy with the trade okay so the second trade is tlc so this one was the the morning gapper until the other stock CREG showed up. This one I was more short biased just because you know it's gapping up on some pretty weak news. I did start a little bit too early. I will admit to that. A little bit too early over here around 950s, but on small size fortunately, and I added some more around a $10 push. And then once we get this parabolic move, that's why I added to full size. I was a little bit nervous as we touched 30 but that rejected really quickly and there was a lot of selling volume that came in even just pre-market and that's where it gave me the confidence to add and hold it uh, for the majority of the flush here so I did cover some small just to you know make sure I protect my downside but once we got this flush I was all out on the short pre-market and uh, at the open I thought we might get like a $10 1050s push when we didn't get that and there was a lot of selling and every Everyone's eyes was on this other stock that rang up before the open. There was no interest in buying a stock. That's why I went in short again. 880s covered most of it into 790s and I was out here and here on the rest. And I left about another dollar move to the downside. But it's also a Friday. I just kind of, you know, want to take it easy on Fridays and, uh, and not get into any kind of trouble. The other stock that was also very nice on the day is CREG, Craig. So this is a stock that started running, I think, 20 minutes before the market opens. And this is the stock that kind of took the attention away from TLC. You know, with stocks like this that bring up huge pre market it's a low float stock, by the way. So when it runs out 350 all the way to, you know, 530s, I'm, you know, bearish on the stock, but I did take a long scalp. But, you know, you can see I didn't stay that long. 420 to 440, I was pretty much out. And this is where I started shorting. I got a very nice size around 520s. And I even added on the way down as well, just because, you know, this is a parabolic move, right? Parabolic move to the upside is often followed by parabolic downside. I was covered before the open. I reshorted some small 430s. And then when we got this push, very nice push to 470s, 460s, that's why I re-added short. And then I was out here and here at this touch of 380s. And I did try to re-add here. 
and then I got some, and then I stopped out on the rest. I rehit it again after I cannot even re um, reclaim VWAP with a $4 area. Just so weak because a lot of people chased it up, right? In the pre-market as well. So, and then I was all out over here, 350, saying a lot, left a lot of downside as well, just like TLC. But, you know, I'm just trying to take the meat of the move. And I also had a red day yesterday, even though it wasn't big, but I just want to be more careful usually on the day after the red days. Um, I just want to trade well and take the meat of the move and uh, lock it in and have a stress-free weekend. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the video and the bad jokes. If you want to see more day trading content, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more. If you'd like to trade with me daily and get my free weekend watch list and trading journal, make sure to check out the links below for more resources. Stay green, stay positive, and I'll see you guys next time.